everybody to the Flats Class Podcast. Today's guest is Daniel Nussbaum. He is number 17 on my blacklist. We call him the Prez. Daniel, tell me a little background information. You're based here in South Carolina. We're at the Shallow Water Expo here in Mount Pleasant. Your company corporate headquarters are only 30 minutes away, if, if that, they're in Ladson. How, give us some background about Z-Man. Yeah, well, CA, um, we've actually been around for over 30 years. A lot of people don't realize that about Z-Man because we've kind of come on the scene in the last five or 10 years. But we started as a silicone skirt manufacturer. One of the um, folks that worked for our predecessor company was a bass fisherman. We were making silicone tape Mm -hmm. uh, for the automotive industry, and he realized that if you color this and put a little glitter in it and slid it into strands, It'll make a great dressing for spinner baits or bass jigs, and things kind of ballooned and grew from there. And it's really grown in the last few years. Yeah, it, it, I met the, the the basically the founder of Z Man, Jonathan Zucker, probably about twelve years ago at a boat show here in Charleston. And at that point in time, I was actually working as a pro for another bait company, but I noticed that the properties that the Z-Man product had were exactly those properties of the company that I was working for. And I was under the impression that that company was OEMing for you instead of vice versa. And Jonathan straightened me out right away. So you, you guys have also been an OEM for a few brands as well over the years. Yeah, that's how we got started. And that's still part of our business. It's a smaller part of our business. Um, but, uh, yeah, we started making silicone skirts for other companies. We started making soft plastics for other companies. And then we kind of got into the consumer branded side of the business when the chatterbait burst on the scene, uh, around 2005, 2006. And that kind of gave us a little bit of confidence to enter the market with our plastics under the Z-Man brand and control our own destiny rather than just selling to other companies and letting them control our destiny. That's right. There's no one that's going to blow your horn louder than you. Correct. Okay. I'm a, I'm a seminar speaker here. I'm a featured seminar speaker here at, at the Shallow Water Expo. And one of, the, one of the things that I cover in a lot of my seminars are Z-Man bait profiles. And I have to explain in great detail at times the terms or the nomenclature that you guys have developed at, at Z-Man. One being Elaztec. What is, what is Elaztec? What's the advantages? Yeah, Elaztec um, is a, it's a thermoplastic rubber, basically. And it's a completely different kind of material than other soft plastic baits are made from. Uh, as you can see, it's super durable. Mm-hmm. It doesn't tear up. We've had uh, numerous people tell us that they've caught over 100 fish on the bait. The record, uh, Ned Cady, the developer of the Ned Rig, he sent us a four-inch finesse worm that he caught 238 bass on. So it's super durable stuff. There are other advantages, too, to Elastec. It's very buoyant, um, so it floats, whether you want to fish a bait unweighted on top and have it stay on top, or whether you're dragging something on the bottom with a jig, and when you stop it, it'll kind of float up off the bottom. It's also really soft. It's 100% non-toxic, unlike other soft plastics. So it's not going to hurt the fish. It's not going to affect water quality. Um, and, you know, we've really kind of pioneered the material. We're the only ones making fishing lures out of this type of material in the United States. Um, and our, our manufacturing techniques and processes are really home-brewed, and it's been really cool to see it balloon and, and really grow. Yeah, you guys, you guys are maybe the fastest growing tackle brand in North America right now, maybe, maybe even internationally, because, I mean, you guys have a huge presence in, in places like Australia. Yeah, that's been really cool to see. We're actually the number one uh, soft lure brand in Australia, New Zealand. Um, we do a tremendous amount of business in um, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand. Uh, Europe is starting to come on strong for their perch and pike fisheries. They've got a lot of toothy fish over there. And where the, wherever you have toothy fish, whether it's on the flats in Florida where you've got, you know, pinfish and puffers or whether it's, you know, pike in Europe or uh, something else in Australia, you know, Elaztec really. Barramundi. Barramundi, that, yeah, they're pretty <laughs> brutal and reef fish and all kind of stuff. Well, that I would say that notwithstanding may be the greatest benefit of Elaztec is its unbelievable action and its resilience 
at times I used to joke in seminars. I was like, I really, I don't even know how these guys make any money because one pack of paddle tails may last an angler. I don't know, two months. I mean, cause you know, you go every weekend. I mean, it's going to be two months before you go through a pack of, of uh, Z-Man paddle tails. Well, fortunately, CA, not everyone is as good of an angler as you. So they throw them in trees and on oyster bars and uh, get them yeah. snagged in rocks. So yeah. uh, well, that, that's our one saving grace. But yeah, I mean, it certainly is nice. I mean, I, you know, fish a lot for reds and trout around here and it's certainly nice to be able to, you know, pull a bait up on a jig head and get up on the front of the boat. And I don't have to, you know, get back down to grab another bait all day. Yeah. I'm a tackle junkie. Uh, if you were to see my shop, you'd know that. And I think I think Joey, who works for you, who's who's basically my direct report, he has to sometimes slow me down and talk me down. He's like, "Do you really need this many baits?" <laughs> I was like, "Of course I do." I mean, it's a back, it's a billboard. Not, it's just not a billboard. I'm using a variety of stuff because we do YouTube at Flats Class almost every day now. I mean, it's an almost everyday thing. Now, let me ask you something that might be a little uncomfortable. Are there weaknesses to this product that you can, you could share? Like, what would be a weakness of this bait? The only weakness I can think of, and it's not really a weakness, um, is that it's just a little bit different to rig than mm-hmm. um, than traditional plastics. It's a little bit tougher to get it on a jig head straight. It's a little bit tougher to get it over the keepers. Uh, but I kind of the analogy that I use is it's kind of like braided line. Um, if you've been fishing long enough and, um, you know, the first time you, you tried braided line, you tied a, a, an improved clinch knot or a fisherman's knot and you went to set the hook on the first fish and that and pulled slipped. out, yeah. you realize you have to use different knots. You have to use a uni knot or a palomar knot. It's the same thing with the Laztec. You might have to use a little bit different style jig head. You might have to, um, you know, rig it a little bit differently. We recommend, you know, stretching and pulling the bait over the keeper on a jig head rather than pushing it up. But that's where, you know, a lot of the videos that we do that's right. come into play. There's really just a learning uh, curve. Don't give that away because we <laughs> want to touch back on that. All right, here's another, here's another term or, or piece of nomenclature that's unique to only Z-Man. The Ned Rig. The, the Ned Rig has taken taking the Midwest and most of the bass community and sweetwater guys by storm. But now there's the salty Ned, the, the, the opportunity to catch spooky redfish, to catch fish that seemed impossible to catch before on shallow, clear water flats. And now it's possible because of the Ned Rig. What, tell us the story behind the Ned Rig. Yeah, it's a really cool story, um, actually. And, uh, you know, like I mentioned before, a Laztec is buoyant. It floats, and it's super durable. And a guy, Ned Cady, really cool guy. Uh, He's a retired archivist from Kansas University, and he's fished for years and years, bass fished for years and years. And his goal isn't to go out and catch big fish. It's to catch a lot of fish. He tries to catch 101 bass in four hours. And years ago, he figured out that if he took our our zinkers – which is our five inch stick worm, Mm -hmm. cut it in half to make it about two and a half inches, put it on a little light, you know, one sixteenth ounce mushroom jig head and just, you know, dragged it slowly on the bottom or hopped it or let it fall slowly. That that was just unbeatable because fish just couldn't say no to it. It was completely non-threatening. It didn't have Mm -hmm. big claws or appendages or a lot of action. It was just soft and chewy and just looked like food. (laughs) And, you know, for years, we said, eh, that's really cool, but nobody's ever going to buy that until another guy named Drew Reese, who you've met and fished with, CA. Yes. Um, and so you've seen Drew in action. Drew basically pestered me for two years until he uh, dragged me up to Lake of the Woods in Canada and showed me just how effective the Ned Rig was. And that's when we decided we're going to make the baits, we're going to make the jig heads. Um, and it went from, you know, five, six years ago. People just laughed at it. Bass fishermen laughed at it, and they said, why am I going to use a crappy jig to bass fish? Mm-hmm. And now you see every other company in the industry knocking us off, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been pretty cool to create a whole new category. There. It, it is a totally – it's a system. 
Mm -hmm. It's truly a system. I mean, there's, I don't know, is there, is there more than 10 profiles in that category now? And you've developed all kinds of different jig heads you, uh, from the pro shrooms to the weedless shrooms to the finesse shrooms, which I prefer the finesse shrooms head because the bait literally will stand straight up and down because it's light enough where it won't let it tip over even a little bit because the, the gauge wire is so thin. And then the, if I'm catching trout, or fishing with someone who's challenged to catch fish that you normally might have to say, okay, they're not going to catch a fish today unless we go buy live shrimp. They're just not, they're not capable. It's not within the skill set. But the Ned Rig has armed me as a professional guide that I can take someone that is so challenged that cannot catch fish on artificial lures, and I can give them a Ned Rig, and they can catch 100 fish in a day because it catches everything, pinfish, needlefish, snook, trout, flounder, little baby gag grouper around docks, snappers. It catches everything. There's nothing that can say, nope, don't want it. It's on every diet. Every diet has it. And you just pick natural, organic colors, and it builds confidence in my clientele. And they get hooked. And they become huge Z-Man fans. Well, you're right. And, that, and that's the great thing about the Ned Rig. And, you know, one advantage that we saw early on, I mean, we really didn't expect, you know, tournament bass fishermen to use it. And there have been, you know, high level bass tournaments won on it. We didn't really even expect saltwater guys to use it. But the one thing that we saw early on is that it's easy to use for somebody that's a novice um, that that hasn't fished with artificials before. Um, you basically just have to fish it slow and drag it on the bottom for kids. It's just a great, you know, we call it a gateway Elastec bait. It is. Um, because, uh, <laughs> you know, people people start fishing the Ned Rig and they realize, you know, how great Elastec is and start fishing they're everything hooked. else. Yeah, they're they're yeah. literally hooked. There's probably a support group out there somewhere <laughs> for this. All right, here's another one. When you talk to inshore anglers, they don't get the chatter bait. Now, they, are, they just started about 10 years ago figuring out that, Okay, the typical standard gold standard R bend spinner bait, diaper type spinner, diaper pin type spinner bait can catch redfish. But they really, you know, they look at the chatter bait and they're like, holy cow, how is this going to catch a fish? And it just looks like it's just going to be, you know, just gagged up with weeds and stuff. But it's amazingly weedless. Are you finding a lot of saltwater inshore guys are relying on the chatterbait now a little bit? Is it is it penetrating that market? Absolutely, more and more, um, especially with the tournament redfish guys. Uh, you go somewhere like Louisiana where you got muddier water. Um, I know whenever I'm in Louisiana, I've got a chatterbait tied on, unless I'm you know really you know doing more technical sight fishing. Um, it's it's hands down the best search bait uh, for muddy water redfish. And like you said, it comes through grass. You know, it doesn't look like it would be very weedless, but, you know, when that blade catches a little bit of grass, same thing with bass fishing as with red fishing. You want to snap that rod, pull that grass off. And a lot of times that's when the fish will jump on it right there is when you're snapping it out of the grass. Here's what I personally um, experience with chatterbait fishing. Yes, it makes sense to fish the chatterbait in the in the standard way where you fish it like a bass angler, cast, retrieve in a static motion, let the bait roll and flash and vibrate, and it'll draw fish to it, especially in mullet muds. If I'm fishing edges like on the edge of a flat that drops into an intercoastal and there's a few oxbows and stuff like that, it's it's deadly where fish will stack up on a corner or in a hook. It works every time. But what I discovered with one particular guide is we were slow jigging the chatterbait, like lift, 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 and it would swim up, and then it would swim down. But the flash, and it wasn't hard. It didn't have that hard rattle. Just jigging it a little bit and then letting it fall back down with that flash, flounder loved it. We would fish it in creek mouths, and flounder went nuts for this bait. They, they really do. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because, you know, just a couple months ago, we got on a really good flounder bite on the chatterbait, and we were fishing it the same way. You know, and, and kind of to your point, CA, a lot of people, you know, look at it and they think of it as, you know, it's just a chunk and wind kind of bait, like mm -hmm. a spinner bait. But it's, you know, it's a bladed jig, and you can fish it like a jig. You can, you know, kind of raise that rod, and it'll flutter down to the bottom. And that really works really well, too. For me... The, the, I, f I, look for, I look for chances to fish it now. I mm -hmm. look for chances to fish it at night. It's a good bait at night. You'd be surprised on how many fish you catch at night because you need something. Anytime I think, gosh, should I be using a rattle trap or should I be using a crankbait? Because I like to fish lip plugs. 
now I start thinking maybe I should be using a chatterbait. And uh, I, I have all kinds of trailers that I like to put on the back of it, like diesel minnows. And sometimes I'll shorten the profile and, and I'll have my clients say, you know, do you keep the skirt on it or do you just fish it naked? And most of the time I fish it naked just with a four inch diesel minnows. But there are times when I'll buy the smaller chatterbaits and I'll, I'll put a smaller profile on there. Sometimes I'll just put the split tail um, that you use as a spinnerbait trailer on there. Sometimes I'll just, sometimes I bulk it up and I want to see if I can catch something bigger and I'll put a razor shad that's five inches long. And, and that's about the only instance I actually get to use my razor shads is when mm -hmm. I use it as a trailer on a chatterbait. What would you say the number one choice for a trailer is on a chatterbait in sweet water? And then would that be the logical choice for an inshore angler? Uh, well, for bass fishermen, I mean, they're throwing that razor shads profile uh, most of the time. Which like is you, bigger and chunkier. Right. It's a little bigger, chunkier. Um, a lot of folks like a turbo cross. It rises up a little bit higher in the water column. Or the diesel minnows is another popular choice, either four inches or five inches. You know, that'll um, it's kind of an intermediate uh, in the water column between the razor shad that has a fork tail and a turbo cross that has a couple of big claws. Good bait fish imitation. For saltwater... My personal choice is just our three-inch minnows with a chartreuse tail. You know how those reds jump oh, all yeah. over a chartreuse tail and gives it, uh, you know, a nice compact profile and, um, you know, is just a great um, bait fish imitator. I think it's a great crab imitator, too. I think a lot of the time that's what... Uh, if you can work it tight to the bottom and, and just kind of static swim it super slow through turtle grass and things like that, yeah. Yeah, and because the reason... Of the clicky noise. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and it, you know, the trailer kind of looks like that claw kind of trailing mm -hmm. behind um, the crab and like you said I find myself looking for opportunities to fish it and the reason why is because uh, when a redfish hits it they just jack the snot out of it and send it right back to the crushers and there's no I mean that blade stops vibrating and you can really you know set up on them you feel like a bass guy setting the hook <laughs> and it's just it's just and that you're pulling they're pulling back it's just a fun way to fish. So every year at at ICAST we have a gathering where you talk to your dealers and we talk about sales forecasts and what new product launches are going to be. And this is always happens like the Tuesday before ICAST gets kicked off. And I'm always thinking, okay, this is the year Daniel's going to walk up to the podium and he's going to say, okay, we're starting to see a flattening off or a drop in chatterbait sales. Because I mean, this bait's been around a long time. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, every year, it gets more and more popular. And it, you guys have made so many different versions. I mean, this year you launched the football head mm -hmm. uh, chatterbait, which was brilliant. Uh, a few years ago, you launched the jackhammer and it sold for, you know, the, the it's most, a, it's, it's a, a 17. $16 yeah. chatterbait. Some retailers sell it for over 20 bucks. And you can't keep, I, we, I, we, we haven't been able, one. we haven't been able to, um, to keep up for the last two years. Um, and, you know, I didn't think people would buy a $16 chatterbait, but, you know, we can't keep them in stock. And it's probably won more money in uh, bass tournaments than any other bait the last two years. It won the Bassmaster Classic last year. Wow. I mean, it's, it's, that's just, a, to me, it's amazing. I keep, that's why I think it's here to stay. I don't, I think 15 years from now, we're going to sit down and we're going to have a conversation over dinner one night. We're going to go, can you believe the chatterbait's like moving into, how old would it be at that point 15 years from now? Yeah, it'll be, it's about 15 years old now. So it'd, it'd be, be about 30, 30 years old. And you know, last year was our best chatterbait year yet. And uh, when I started at Z-Man 11 years ago, I thought it had peaked. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> so the chatterbait truly has been a game changer for mm -hmm. Z-Man. I mean, I think the Ned Rig has been a game changer, but those those two have really carried the water. Well, the, the cool thing about those two, CA, and what we try to do is we try to innovate. We try not to be copycats. And, you know, there's always bait profiles that are similar from one company to the next because there's profiles that are essential. But with the Chatterbait and the Ned Rig, what we've done is we've created new bait categories. That's right. And that's what we try to do. We try to pioneer and innovate and work with people like you that are, you know, innovative thinkers, all of our other bass pros, you know, they're sharp, uh, you know, lure designers, really smart guys. And we want to be a step ahead. We want to be on the cutting edge. We don't want to be the ones that, that are, are me too's. That's yeah. right. You, that's that's why we have the slogan, the science and art of fishing here at Z-Man. All right, folks, we're going to take a short break right now uh, to pay a few bills. 
But we'll be back with part two with number 17, The Prez, on the Flats Class Podcast Blacklist. Captain C.A. here for Papa's Pilar Rum, one of my favorites. A robust flavor with a long finish, Papa's Pilar had a passion for adventure, and he had a taste for a really good drink at the end of the day, just like myself. Try Papa's Pilar. I think you'll enjoy it. Hey everybody, Captain CA here from Flats Class, and I want to introduce you to a brand that I fell in love with. It's the Florida Cracker Trading Company right here in Brooksville, Florida. In fact, they've got a world-class kitchen with awesome southern cooking. They've got a tap room that has an unbelievable bourbon wall, and all the local taps are right here from Florida. You're not, you're not getting the standard domestic beers. And then the retail store is unbelievable. They've got branded apparel in there. They've got Yeti products. They've got Smith Optics. They've got fire disc cookers. You really need to check them out online, check their social media platforms out, or better yet, come here and visit them. All right, part two of you're the number 17, the Prez on the blacklist here at Flats Class Podcast. Uh, today, we're sitting down with Daniel Nussbaum. He is the president of Z-Man Fishing Products. All right, part one was pretty exciting stuff. We covered a lot, but let's talk about how you guys teach your customer base on how to use your products. Because by doing that, and you have some awesome pros that that are really helping you out. Guys like Stephen Browning, he's just a natural teacher. David Walker, natural teacher. Brian Latimer, BLAT, natural teacher. But let's talk a little bit about whose idea was these videos for you guys to do? Because it's just not the pros that are teaching in these videos because you've got this, this Project Z stuff going on. You use your guides, you use some of the personnel right there at Z-Man. Wh whose idea was this? This is like a flats class idea. Yeah, it, it kind of came together Gosh, I want to say about six or seven years ago, CA, when, uh, you know, one, our mantra has always been, uh, you know, because we kind of came in, I want to think as a little bit of an underdog. We're going up against, you know, big companies with big marketing budgets. The Berkeleys of the world. Yeah, yeah. And, and Strike Kings and of Strike the Kings world. Strike Kings and Pragco's. And, you know, that's our, that's our competition. And, you know, it's hard to compete with those guys. We know we can't outspend them but we can always outwork them. Um, and, you know, years ago, we've always had a relationship. Not, well, gosh, probably for almost 10 years now, we've been working with you. Mm -hmm. But the way the videos really started is, you know, there wasn't – TV was a, was a really big deal. It's, you know, becoming less and less of a big deal as, you know, YouTube and digital video and social media has kind of come on the last five years. But we really couldn't find a freshwater TV show – to uh, to partner with uh, that was within our budget. And we said, hey, you know, let's start making our own videos. Um, we saw, you know, Facebook uh, featuring more and more videos. We saw YouTube coming on strong. So we kind of got on that digital video bandwagon a lot earlier than most other companies. You did. And I, I think because of your pro staff, you guys have really, like, taken the lead on that. Other companies are copying what you're trying to accomplish there. Uh, for us, that has always been the secret at Flats Class is the ability to take a product, tell you what it does, give you all the products that support that particular bait and how to fish it. And then people get, you know, we show them video wise through evidentiary, you know, it's obvious this works, it's going to work. And you guys have taken that to those nice little short snippet levels where everyone learns something. I watch it all the time. I mean, I, I go on there and I, I'm learning about bass baits because I'm trying to figure out how can I take a variation, a variant of this style and make it work for redfish, make it work for speckled trout, make it work for flounder. So it's been pretty, pretty unique. This, this next part that I want to touch base with, you know, we talked a little bit about your pro staff. <laughs> so I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw something out here. I've listed, and now I haven't listed them all. I've lift, I listed, you know, some of the heavy hitters here. Um, but I've listed enough of them that we can have a little fun with this. 
I'm going to say the name and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of say something I think about him and I want you to kind of expound on it a little bit. Sure. Uh, Luke Clausen. Luke Clausen, I call him the wise guy. The, I, the I think, troublemaker, the I, Eddie Haskell of your brain. I think you've got, got that about <laughs> right. And, you know, for a guy that has won the Bassmaster Classic and the Forestwood Cup, which I think there's just about five or six guys that have, you I know, think checked right. both of those yeah, off the list. Check those boxes. Uh, so he's an incredible angler, but also an incredibly laid-back guy with a great sense of humor. Uh, case in point, we were filming a Project Z video uh, years ago, and uh, – he, the night before, um, he was supposed to do a little competition with David Walker. The night before, he stripped about 20 yards of line off of one of Walker's spinning reels, cut the line, and then reeled it back up. <laughs> so when they were competing the next day, the first cast Walker made, he, about 20 feet of line went out, and then his, the, it bait just went gone. flying. Bait was gone, and he had to retie, and Luke was one up on him at that point. And, and – and I could see him having that Cheshire cat smile with feathers on his lips like he just ate the canary. That yeah. I think that is a perfect way to describe Luke Clausen. All right, talking about, talking about Walker, here's what I think when I think of Walker. I've known Walker a long time. I used to compete against him in the Redfish Cup in the FLW Series. Walker, I think, whitest teeth in this business. But, great teeth. But great, great teeth. teeth. Okay. Wheaties box. You tell me something about Walker. He Walker is he's a very polished guy, and I mean the guy's just a fish head. But when it comes to um, you know the technical aspects of lures and lure design, he is one of the most meticulous people I know. And he's he's a he's a jig fishing savant is how I would mm -hmm. describe him. I mean fishing a, a a jig whether it's flipping a swim jig, a finesse jig, a football jig. I mean, he's the man when it comes to jig fishing. So that's why we tapped him to develop our cross size jigs. And when we started that project, CA, he said, you know, I'm going to drive you nuts because I'm going to be super, <laughs> super picky. And he drove me nuts. But as a result, I think we've got some of the best bass jigs around. And he's just, you know, a very, very detail oriented guy. I'm friends with him. I, I mean, David and I relate a lot on a lot of different levels. We're the, basically the same age guys. We have a lot of similar sponsors him and I are both you know Evan Rude pros and stuff like that so I I've got a, a long list of funny stories about David but let's move on to a Browning Stephen Browning he's the Arky mm -hmm. um, he's a great teacher he's another guy that has a lot of versatility I can remember he competed once in Kima Texas with Jeff Coble on the ESPN Redfish Cup and they won one on the jetty I mean and that was straight up just they're fishy he's a fishy dude he is a fishy dude. He's a, he's a river rat. He mm -hmm. loves running those rivers in Arkansas. Great, you know, muddy water fisherman. And, you know, he is a guy that has really come through for us. He's won, you know, several Bassmaster Opens. Um, and, you know, just a solid all-around guy. A great teacher. And, you know, it's funny. Uh, we were I was talking with him about that, that tournament in Texas that mm -hmm. he won. We were red fishing here. And we had all our pros together in November. And he's just a down to earth, salt of the earth, you know, family guy, just Reg a regular, great guy. regular everyday guy. Yep. All right, next guy, a little bit different dude, MDJ. MD, MDJ, first of all, I learned that he is a hell of a ping pong player. I mean, he could take money from you. And, and I don't know if he could take money from me. I'm going to challenge him. I'm, uh, me and my 11 year old Evan, we've been going at it hard in the garage. So next year at our pro staff summit, yeah, MBJ we, is we, going we down may, on the we, ping pong. MBJ table. might have might yeah. have to go down. And I mean, it, he's he's about as country as a turnip green. Even though he was a Californian, but I mean, he lives in like Pell City, Alabama, and you talk to him for five minutes, and you're like, oh boy. I mean, duck hunting. I mean, everything you can imagine that you wouldn't expect to come out of MDJ comes out of MDJ. He tried to teach me how to tie an FG knot, and I looked at him, and I was like, dude, I don't braid hair. I'm not doing that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> you, you know, I, I felt pretty good. He got on my boat. Um, I got to fish with him one day back in November and had an absolute blast. And he uh, – 
I, it's funny you said that about the FG knot because he looked at my FG knot and he's like, "Yeah, that's pretty good." So I, <laughs> I felt I felt pretty good if uh, you know one of the best bass fishermen in the world's telling me my knots uh, look good. But like you said, I mean MDJ is a super interesting guy because he's like he's a he's a left coaster, you know, yeah. California guy. So he's kind of got that that West Coast vibe a little bit, you know. Really, the way he talks, yeah, but a little surfer in him somewhere. A, a little bit, yeah. But then you know he's been in Alabama for the last I don't know 10, 15 years. I know he went to college there really smart guy um and but like you and said a big family man too. yeah big family guy I mean he's got a couple of kids in high school and you know really his his energy is just just amazing I mean he keeps going 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 he's like 100 miles an hour when he's on the water all right let's move to the next one uh Gussie when yeah. I think Gussie he's the Canadian is mm-hmm. what I like to call him I want I want to do a podcast with this guy that was the first time was at the Pro Staff Summit that I ever met Gussie. And Gussie's the type of personality where that was the, the week the incident happened uh, where the Pittsburgh Steelers were playing um, the Browns and the Brown defensive lineman took a swing with a helmet to the, to the bare head yeah, of yeah. the Pittsburgh quarterback. And we're all like, we're shocked. I mean, this is, this is outrageous. The guy could have got killed. And Gussie just says, out of the blue, it's dead quiet while we're watching it on TV. Gussie goes like this. He goes, dude, that's not even three minutes in the penalty box in hockey. There's no blind. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what, what Gussie is. Yeah, Gussie – yeah, I actually met Gussie um, through Drew Reese, who I mentioned in the first half, who helped me with all the Ned Rig stuff, through Drew. Because Drew's up on Lake of the Woods in Canada. They tournament mm-hmm. fish against each other. So Drew took me fishing with Gussie a few years ago. And I watched this guy just, you know, go to work so methodically. He was very, you know, meticulous about his tackle and his baits. And, you know, I w- and he's just a solid, solid guy. You know, the nicest guy oh, you God, could ever yeah. meet. I mean, I, you know, I couldn't imagine him saying anything bad about anybody. Um, but, uh, you know, the thing that really amazed me about him is you got a guy at Lake of the Woods in Canada, and then he's going down to Florida and finishing in the top five in you know oh, tournaments yeah. on grass lakes where he's used to fishing deep, clear, rocky lakes. Yeah. So, I mean, incredibly skilled angler, Good but stuff. he's just a, an incredible outdoorsman. I mean, he's a hunting guide. He ice fishes. I mean, right now he's probably – well, actually, right now he's in Florida fishing, but last week he was probably on his snowmobile catching walleye through the uh, ice. Of course. Of yeah. course, drinking – Moose heads. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Next guy on the list. And he will be one I'll definitely podcast. Maybe the energizer bunny of our group, a great entertainer, a legitimate fisherman, has turned YouTube upside down. And that is B Lat, Brian Latimer. I mean, the guy is the undeniable force in social media. Yeah, B Lat, I mean, he's been he's game been, changer. He's been, yeah, as he likes to say, <laughs> game changer. He's he's been he's been great for us, and I think we've been great for him too. It's just been a great relationship. I met Blat um, actually at a Department of Natural Resources summit a few years ago. It was before his first year on FLW tour, and honestly, I had never heard of the guy. But after five minutes talking with him, I was like, I got to work with this guy. This guy's going to be something. We need to get this guy on TV. It's turned out to be be YouTube. But the one thing I'll say about Blat, well, let me say two things about Blat. One is I've never met anybody that loves to fish more than him. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, I, would a say, lot of I mean, people, he's the saltwater fishing now. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. like on, if he's got, you know, a day free, he's dragging his aluminum boat down here to saltwater fish. And the second thing is he's got to be the hardest working guy in the business. He never sleeps. He never sleeps. I mean, just, uh, you know, he wasn't able to do this uh, Hadrill's Expo this year because he just had a bass open um, By the way, that he, ended he made Friday. It, he made it here yesterday. Yeah, well, he texted me <laughs> yesterday. And he's like, I'm on my way back to Florida. I'm going to stop by. And it's like, you know, after not seeing your kids for a week and a half, he's going to come, you know, hang out and talk fishing. Um, but, uh, yeah, just an awesome guy. Works his butt off and, and just loves su- to fish. Super engaging. Mm-hmm. All right, another guy, someone that not everyone knows about, Rob Jordan. I got to fish with Rob Jordan at the Z-Man Summit. He was on boat on board my boat with uh, with Kim. That's from your office. This guy is a guide. I I, the, I was immediately impressed with his ability to, to make Kim better. Mm-hmm. I mean, amazing guy. Yeah, Rob. Rob's a great guy. He actually put me on my first spotted bass probably eight or nine years ago on Lake Lanier, and that's where he guides. And he's he's really like the guru of Lake Lanier. I mean, every 
every BFL tournament there, it seems like he's, you know, taking everybody else's money, but a great guide, a great teacher, and, you know, just a perfect fit for our pro staff because, you know, we want people, that's why we like Flats Class TV, mm -hmm. and that's why we wanted to work with you, is we want people that can teach and educate about Elaztec. And, you know, Rob's also a really sharp uh, bait designer, too. So we've got a really cool drop shot bait that's going to drop at ICAST that we've been working with Rob on for the last couple of years. Yeah, but I'm a big fan of Rob. I, I, I like Rob. I like his demeanor. I like his approach. Rob's, Rob's a, he's going to be in business a long time. I'm going to throw another name out there. <laughs> I only know him through other pro staffs and things like that, but he's, he's a unique dude. And he's his, we talk about country. I mean, we're talking about thrift, thrifty. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian Thrift. He, he he he's a a good old boy, just a just a all shucks, darn it, you know, yeah. kind of guy. But uh, I mean, talk about a fish head, and talk about a guy that just has incredible instincts. I mean, the thing that amazes me about him is he has you know, pretty much won everything there is to win on the FLW side. I mean, he's won the Forest Wood Cup. He's won Angler of the Year. He's won multiple tournaments. I mean, he's just racked up huge tournament winnings. Well, he's out there fishing like the Wednesday night working man tournaments on Lake Wiley. I mean, he's well, just... he's every day. I mean, yeah. he's right off the Andy Griffith show. This, oh, yeah, this guy could yeah. be an extra on Gunsmoke. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not kidding you guys. This guy's amazing. If I were going to pick one guy out of all the guys I know on the Sweetwater side, and say, all right, we're going to drop you on the moon. Don't come back without a bass. You know who's coming back with a bass? Oh, yeah. Thrifty. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's something else. And it was really cool when he was down here in November with, with the rest of our guys. Um, you know, it was really cool to see him. And he really hadn't saltwater fished much, but he was just going to work, just crushing the redfish, mm -hmm. catching them on chatter baits and, and crawls and all the, kind of I, stuff. I talked, I, mean, to the, was, I talked to the guy that took him fishing. He goes like this. He goes, this guy was throwing stuff that I thought he's wasting his time. He goes, and every bait he pulled out of the bag worked. Yeah, he's just he's just about the fishiest dude on the planet, I think. And he's if you're a tournament fisherman, you don't want to fish against that guy. I, I'm trying to keep our time in line, so I'm not going to be able to go all the way down the list. But these two guys I want to talk a little bit about, and that's Joey – and Miles yeah, from Sweetwater. The Sweetwater guys. The Sweetwater boys. I didn't get to meet Miles um, at this event because he had a, a family issue come up and he couldn't show up. But I did get to meet Joey. And I don't know if I've ever met a guy. It seemed like there was a 12-year-old trapped inside of him. He was so <laughs> excited. He fished every moment. He fished till 2 o'clock every night when we were at the, at the clubhouse is what I was calling that place where you guys put us up. And then he'd be up and ready to go for the media stuff the next morning. And then just as soon as he got back, he was like, well, what time's dinner? And I was like, I think they want us to, to go down to the Acme restaurant, Acme Oyster Bar at like uh, 7 o'clock. He goes, oh, I got time to fish. And goes out and fishes <laughs> again. I mean, crazy energy. Uh, I did a little research on Miles, and I know his nickname is Sonar. Yeah. And I never really put the two apart, but his father actually lives very close to me in Inglis. That is Radar Radar, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Radar from MASH. From MASH. Uh -huh. so, uh, I didn't realize that for the first three years we worked together, yeah, that's actually. Crazy. Yeah, is I didn't that put it together. Crazy? But yeah. those guys have a great show. Tom Rowland's done a really good job producing that stuff for those guys, and they're super relatable dudes. They, they, they have an awesome show. And, you know, I've been a big fan of uh, Tom Rowland and Rich Tudor for years. Um, we've never worked with them officially, but I've always liked their show and mm -hmm. what they do. And years ago, this is probably going back eight or nine years, um, I said to them, if y'all ever do a bass show, sign us up. And they came to us and said, we're going to do a bass show. And I said, sign us up. <laughs> sign us up. Uh, little did I know that we were going to get uh, guys like Miles and Joey. I kind of knew of Miles before. I didn't know Joey. Right. Um, but both of those guys have just been incredible members of our team. I mean, Miles is, you know, he's great with the, the video. Um, he's always, you know, sending us great. And, you know, like UCA, he's an educator. He explains, explains how to use our stuff, explains the benefits of our products. And Joey is just a, you know, a really fun guy, straight up fish head, family guy. If you follow him on social media, you'll he's see every, he's, he's on the, every He's everywhere. He, he's on the water with his two kids when he's not guiding, yeah, you know? Yeah, he's sick for it. He's got a yeah. virus. I, 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 Joey's... And that's the kind of guys we want. He's yeah, the guys he, that, that it's live for it. It's yeah. contagious with him. All right, let's let's uh, break away from pro staff and let's talk about something that is kind of cool, and what you guys have developed. And I want to talk about the specialized terminal tackle. Mm -hmm. um, some of these rigging hooks that you've come up with, uh, like the chin locks, the Texas eye, 
the uh, the trout eye. I mean, you've you've come up with tackle, terminal tackle that is custom made to work with the Elastec material. Who does this stuff for you? Is this just kind of guys are coming to you with ideas to to try to be a part of your brand, or are you are you sending this stuff out and saying, hey, this is what we need build something for me and send it back. Yeah, it's really a, a team effort. And, you know, every product is a little bit different and has a story behind it. Um, you know, with with um, terminal tackle like our chin locks or our head locks, jig heads, uh, those are actually the brainchild of um, our Australian distributor, mm-hmm. which is TT Lures. They've, they're the biggest jig head brand in Australia. They have a factory in Fiji. So actually all those TT Lures project, projects are made in Fiji. Um, wow. All the all the eye strike products like the trout eye and the redfish eye and the Texas eye and the weedless eye, those are kind of kind of home brewed by a couple of guys, Ralph Phillips and Dave Flad, who are you know kind of our local trout fishing gurus. Um, but they um, you know they had this idea for um, which I think it's a great idea and I think it really works and is a different maker difference maker is having a really big prominent eye Eye. because that's a big strike target especially for trout yeah Yeah. when when they when they came they came to us when they were developing this and they said what do we need to do to make this work with the last tech and that's when we came up with the idea for two you know sharp keeper barbs so um, every every product kind of has its own story but you know, that was the one thing that we were missing 10 years ago when we launched Elastec is the terminal tackle to go along with it. Right. That and was now, kind of the missing piece. Yeah. Now that we now that we have it, it, they go hand in hand. You buy one, you buy the other. Right. That's the way it works out. There's so much stuff I want to cover with you. Colors. I'm going to I'm going to throw a few colors out there. I want to know where where these colors come from. I mean, some of these colors are not what I would call PC like bubblegum. <laughs> Breaking brim, hot snakes. I want to know that story. Um, the deal, morning wood. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, these are these are some. They're catchy, and is it marketing or do they work? But I own every one of these colors. I use. I mean, breaking brim. I love that color. That yeah. is a scaly color. It's a cool color. Bubblegut pink is, and I preach this in every seminar. Bubblegut is one of my favorite colors. Oh, it's a great color. Yeah. And and you know that I love hot snakes because hot snakes is part of my salty Ned kit that I sell on my website. Right. So, you know, I just sometimes I wonder. I mean, I I know that we have some branded stuff that's coming out for flats class baits, and 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 guys know that. I will I will pick things I pick baits based off do they work first but then I like to try to put a little fun in naming them so you'll see some stuff like beer run mm-hmm. beer run's going to be a good one. oh yeah that'll who be I'm, the, I'm looking forward to who that the color. heck doesn't want beer run that's right you know you can relate to beer run uh, fried baloney if you if you are below the Mason Dixon line you're you, going to have fried baloney, baloney. <laughs> that's right all right let's talk about something else let's talk about. The future Z-Man properties, are you are you ever thinking that Z-Man may obtain or develop a hard bait line or a spoon, like spoons for saltwater? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think we're just scratching the surface right now. Um, the one thing that, uh, you know, I have to kind of restrain myself a little bit because there's so many things that I want to do, and we just want to make sure that we keep all of our customers, our retailers, happy by mm-hmm. being able to to fill orders and right. supply them with product. That's the most important thing, especially as fast as we're growing. Um, so keeping up with ev- all of our growth has been been a challenge, but yeah, definitely. I mean, the sky's the limit. Um, we want to keep this company growing. We're not happy with where we are right I mean we are happy with where we are right now but we're never going to be satisfied that's good we want to keep on growing and keep on pushing the limits but the key is CA is uh is we want to we want to innovate we don't want to come out with a hard bait line that's just a me too that's a copy of everything that's else. right we want to do something different, different. Um, and something that's going to help people catch more fish all right. One of, one of the things I've noticed about the culture at Ladson when I go to the corporate office is everyone that works there is somehow connected to the outdoors. You guys all fish. Oh, you're, yeah. a, you're a closet fisherman. I mean, you're out there fishing a lot. You've got a, you've got a little redneck cred to you because, I mean, you're the redneck exec. You actually go fishing on a weekly basis, you know, using your baits. What's your favorite 
What's your favorite profile and what's your favorite color? Right now, the bait, I was telling somebody here this yesterday at the uh, Shallow Water Expo. The last year, I have fished our four inch scented jerk shads on a trout eye finesse jig head in the redfish toad color more than anything. Really? Um, it's just a, it's a small profile. You put it on, you know, it'll catch anything. Little trout, I caught a 34 inch red on it a few weeks ago. Um, you know, it's uh, that little one aught hook on the trout eye finesse jig head mm -hmm. gives that bait uh, a little bit of wiggle because there's a lot of body behind it. And it's just a straight up fish catcher. Uh, it just, it just works. And, you know, I've got, I'm probably like you. I've got probably 250 packs of baits <laughs> in my boat um, and six rods rigged up all the time. But I just find myself grabbing that, that one. one the most. You know, shallow water, deep water, clear water, muddy water, it's going to catch fish. Okay. It's just not you that fishes there. You got Glenn, your national sales manager, that fishes there. You've got Joey that fishes like crazy. You got Shane that fishes. Everyone fishes there. I mean, that's what Kim fishes there. They all fish there. I mean, they bring their dogs to work. I mean, I love the culture. I mean, it just feels so relaxed. It, it is very relaxed. And, yeah, I mean, I was going to mention mention the dogs. I mean, we've had up to six dogs in our <laughs> office at any time. Uh, so, you know, that's that, that's pretty cool to work in such a laid back environment. Um, we really, you know, try to get people that, that are, are passionate about fishing and passionate about the lures that we make. That's right. And I think that's important. All right. Two more questions. First question, you're a Charleston guy. I want to know the best damn restaurant in Charleston. Cause I got one more night here and I want to go out. What's the best Charleston? What kind of food do you want? Cause we got a little of everything. Well, you know, I'm an, I'm weak for oysters, but Naturally, when I think Charleston, I think Southern comfort food, but I also think seafood too. So if I have to, if I have to pick a fusion joint in Charleston, where would I go? Yeah, well, for seafood, I got to say uh, Hanks is about the best. That's what I've heard. Um, Hanks is, you know, it's 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 a little high end, top notch. Um, but uh, let me tell you, if you want some uh, some good oysters. Um, then and really good seafood, really high end. The ordinary. The ordinary. I've been there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I, so you I took, know, I took you my know. wife there. They do. They do some smoked oysters there. They do oh, the, um, the seafood tower. The seafood tower is oh, great, but level. they always have. You know, last time we were there, we had you know an awesome um, you know king mackerel pate, and uh, you know it's just it's just amazing. All right. Last question. I promise, because I, I try to keep these things in a reasonable amount of time. If you weren't the leader of the free tackle world like you are as president of Z-Man Baits. What the hell would you be doing right now? Well, I hate to say this, but <laughs> I would probably be uh, be a lawyer. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, well, because that's what I was. I did not expect that. Well, that's what I was before. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'm the luckiest person in the world, CA. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I practiced law for three years. I hated every second of it. Um, and I told my wife, uh, you know, just a few months after we were married that I was going to go to work in a tackle shop. And I went to work at the Charleston Angler. And I and told she her. she stayed with you. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I told her I was going to do it for two years and then figure out what I was going to do uh, when I grew up. And uh, fortunately, the opportunity to run Z-Man came along. But if it hadn't, I have a feeling I'd be back in the trenches uh, doing something I didn't like to do. But the way I look at it, uh, you know, I've got uh, I've got the – there's one job in Charleston, which is where I want to live because I grew up here. I love mm -hmm. fishing here. There's one job in Charleston like I've got, and I've got it. So I'm the luckiest person on earth. Well, and that is all for the Flats Class Podcast. Number 17 on the blacklist, the Prez. <laughs>